Hi folks, Carlton from the Pharmacy Seeds Network. This is part two in the series on the biochemical sequence of nutrition in plants. This is uh, on the importance of boron in plant growth. Boron is a micronutrient critical to the growth and health of all crops. It is a component of plant cell walls and reproductive structures. It is a mobile nutrient within the soil, meaning it is prone to movement within the soil. Because it is required in small amounts, it is important to deliver boron as evenly as possible across the field. Traditional fertilizer blends containing boron struggle to achieve uniform nutrient distribution. Despite the need for this critical nutrient, boron is the second most widespread micronutrient deficiency problem worldwide after zinc. Major functions of boron in plants. Boron plays a key role in, diverse, in a diverse range of plant functions, including cell wall formation and stability, maintenance of structural and functional integrity of biological membranes, movement of sugar or energy into growing parts of plants, and pollination and seed set. Adequate boron is required for effective nitrogen fixation and nodulation in legume crops. Boron deficiency commonly results in empty pollen grains, poor pollen vitality, and a reduced number of flowers per plant. Low boron can also stunt root growth, as shown in the soybean and canola photos below. So in picture one here, uh, you can see shoot and root growth of soybean and canola plants with low and adequate boron supply. Uh, uh, plant analysis for boron. To determine a plant's boron nutrient status, younger leaves are recommended for sampling and analysis. Typically, adequate boron levels in dried leaf tissues range from 25 to 75 parts per million uh, of boron, which is considerable, which is a considerable quantity for many crops. Generally, a soil application of boron is recommended when leaves contain less than 25 parts per million in high boron demanding crops such as alfalfa, sugar beets, potatoes, sunflower, soybeans, and canola. Now, I'm just going to add a little addendum here. They're talking about uh, dry tissue analysis. And if you really want to know what's going on in your plants, I highly recommend doing a plant sap analysis. And the only company that I know of available in the United States currently for that is a company called Advancing Eco Agriculture. I will share a link below to their website. Uh, and uh, you should see my other uh, video on plant sap analysis. Um, so check that out on my channel. Actually, I'll throw a link down below on that also. Uh, okay, uh, boron deficiency symptoms. Most crops are not able to mobilize boron from veg vegetative tissues to actively growing meristematic plant tissues such as shoots, root tips, flowers, seeds, or fruits. Rather, boron transports occur occurs primarily in the xylem channel, resulting from transpiration. Because of this, deficiency symptoms first develop in newly developed plant tissues such as young leaves and reproductive structures. And I uh, will zoom in on this for a sec so you can see. And uh, yeah, see, so uh, deficient. You notice the uh, the sort of uh, light colored green and in, in the new shoots. And over here where it's adequate, you can see these leaves are more filled out, and that color is much more uniform. <coughs> So, under severe boron deficiency, stunted development and death of meristematic growing points are common. Other common reactions include reduced root elongation, failure of flowers to set seeds, and fruit abortion. Low boron supply may also adversely affect pollination and seed set without visible leaf deficiency symptoms. Soil factors affecting boron deficiency in plants. Boron deficiency is highly prevalent in, highly prevalent in sandy acidic soils with low organic matter due to the potential for boron leaching. Soils in high absorption and retention capacity, example soils with high pH and rich in clay minerals and iron or aluminum oxides are also commonly impacted by a boron deficiency. In most crops, boron shows very, very poor flow and mobility. Consequently, boron in leaf tissue cannot be transported sufficiently into the reproductive organs, uh, example shoot tips, buds, flowers, seeds, etc. Because of this poor mobility, keeping, boron, keeping soluble boron in soil solution during all stages of plant growth, particularly during reproductive growth, example, during seed setting, is critical for optimal plant nutrition. 
And so this goes back to one of the many trace mineral factors that is the driving reason that I use products like Accelerate from Advancing Eco Agriculture and some of their other products as well. But Accelerate is particularly uh, designed to make sure that there's adequate boron, magnesium, manganese, zinc, copper, molybdenum, all those sort of uh, reproductive nutrients to make sure that the, there are adequate levels there because that's really, really important for developing flowers and shoots and fruits and to finally, f uh, you know, uh, filling and correctly filling seeds with the appropriate nutrition to make sure that they actually develop correctly. Okay, environmental factors affecting boron deficiency. Environmental factors that reduce transpiration, such as high air humidity and low soil moisture, have adverse impacts on xylem transpiration of boron. Extended periods of drought impede boron uptake by reducing root growth, limiting the supply of boron from organic matter reserves, and, de and by depressing diffusion and transport of boron to root surfaces. Plants under low boron supply are more susceptible to damage from high light intensity associated with long, hot, sunny days. Uh, see picture three. Under boron deficiency, the use of absorbed light energy in photosynthesis is significantly reduced, leading to an excess amount of energy and potential for leaf damage. Low soil temperature can also reduce boron uptake. So you can see again here, uh, uh, they've got this, uh, they're saying sunflower in picture three, but that's not picture. Well, okay, anyway. Uh, so to go back to these points, uh, so not only does it not only does it limit the growth of the plants, it also ends up uh, you know leaving more sunlight energy available to do damage to the plants rather than being utilized in benefit to the plants. So uh, many of these things that affect photosynthesis have multiple negative or positive effects depending which way you're spinning the wheel, so to speak. Uh, so sufficient boron for better root uptake of phosphorus and potassium. Studies show that adequate boron nutrition improves root uptake of phosphorus and potassium by maintaining proper function through ATP, through ATPase activity and structure of root cell membranes. Boron has an important role in colonization of roots with microbial fungi, which contributes to root uptake of phosphorus. In some short-term experiment, short experiments with corn plants, reduced root uptake of phosphorus and potassium under low boron supply was restored within one hour after boron was added to the growth medium. You hear that? One hour response time. There are a few nutrients that you can see a response in one hour on. Boron is one of them. That's how mobile it is in the soil and in the plant. Experimental evidence also suggests that adequate, bor adequate boron supply is needed for mitigation of aluminum toxicity in plants grown in low pH soils. Uh, tips for preventing low boron deficiency, or boron deficiency. Soil test your fields every two years to gain a thorough understanding of the nutrient levels in your field. Make sure to compare your yield goals with current nutrient needs and discuss options with an agronomist. Because there is a fine line between deficiency and toxicity, it's important to apply the correct amount of boron at the right rate using the right source. Uh, and they recommend Aspire boron, uh, ensures uniform distribution across each field, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I would say go to Advancing Eco Agriculture site and get their rebound boron. And that is very specifically targeted and chelated for restoring that issue. Um, so, that's some basic stuff on boron. Um, there's lots more to talk about, but, uh, but I don't want to go too far in depth here. I just kind of want to uh, go through each nutrient and give you a general understanding of its role in plant health and, and, and the different puzzle pieces that it fits into plant health and soil health and how it affects plant growth. So uh, boron, as we were talking about, is the uh, the first one in the plant biochemical sequence of nutrition in plants. And in our next video, we're going to go into silica or silicon, and we'll look at how, uh, how that affects plant growth. There's a lot of conflicting information out there, uh, but a lot of this uh, plant science uh, develop, a lot of the plant science developments that have been made, have been made very recently, uh, uh, anywhere from like 2013 on and even more recently in the last couple of years uh, here we are sitting at 2020 but even anywhere between six, 2016 and 2020 there's been a tremendous amount of research done um, and again uh, I highly recommend you go over and check out Advancing Eco Agriculture's channel um, 
I will also put a link to that below. They have a lot of excellent webinars and podcasts that go much deeper into plant nutrition, soil health, and that sort of thing. Um, I learned a lot from those guys, and I still learn from those guys, and they're still uploading new and uh, very interesting and informative content. So uh, I hope you go check that out. Um, and I think uh, that concludes this, uh, except I'll just let you uh, get a look at other stuff you can read further on here uh, that they cite at the bottom of this page. And of course, I'll, uh, I'll share this, uh, this link, uh, www.cropnutrition.com. Uh, their resource library, the importance of barn and plant growth. We'll share that link below as well. And uh, thanks to cropnutrition.com for this particular segment of this video. Uh, I hope you found this informative or interesting. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to comment below and ask your questions or make your comments. Uh, always open to new ideas, insight, questions, anything like that. So uh, don't be afraid to do that. Uh, thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network. Hope you'll tune in for the next uh, video in the series, and that'll be looking.